Hello, Nick. What do we have today? Hi, MD. Today we've got Sloppy and Stove. Hello, What's Sloppy and Stove. Cafe. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. How's the weather over there? <laughs> a little bit. It's 90. A little hot. Yeah, a little no. hot today. 92 degrees. Can't complain. Well, you got though. a fan on. So, so thank you for being here, guys. Thanks XRP for Cafe is a marketplace for XRP Ledger NFTs, correct? That is correct. It's a, it's a cozy marketplace where you can buy, sell, create NFTs within, you know, a couple clicks. So we try to be the easiest and seamless marketplace out there when it comes to listing an NFT, buying an NFT, creating NFTs. So anything along those sorts. Is there like a, a ranking among the XRP marketplaces? Are you guys on the top? I would think. They've got to yeah. be, surely. Yep. So in terms of like sales, not including like mints or anything like that. I think we're at 32,000 and the closest one to us is 22,000. But in terms of volume, we're coming in a close second. Hopefully, hopefully going to be number one here soon. With a with good reason, right? It's easy to use. It's beautiful. Yeah. And like you guys say, it's cozy. Exactly. You know, our, our whole philosophy behind the marketplace is, you know, we want to like, let's say, for example, I want to give my mom my phone and say, go buy an NFT. I want her to be able to do it without me being like, oh no, click over there, click over there. And to be completely honest, it, she can definitely do it. I think it takes max three clicks to actually get to a collection, find an NFT and then be able to purchase it. So, so we want to look at all of this here today on your site and would like you to take it away and just walk us through all the things that people can do from looking at collections to minting maybe. Um, yeah, just take it away. Yeah, for sure. So right now you're looking at the home screen and at the top, that is a collection hero. So, you know, projects will come to us if they're interested in minting or they want to purchase a hero. They basically reach out to us in the Discord, let us know what they want. Um, and then you'll see that right there. So the reunions from Yanni Verth, um, she is actually minting with us currently. And that is the hero made. A little bit further down right in the center of the page you'll have you know the top collections by volume um ranked from one through ten and then the next tab over is that trending column which just looks at sales and then it kind of gives you like an average price of those sales um you know that's the statistics page as of right now we do have another one coming out here soon can kind of give you like a little sneak preview or you know let you know what's going to be on it so you're going to be able to see, you know, change percentages, floor price, sales, owners, how many are listed, be able to favor them. And then we have some pretty, pretty detailed analytics that are going to be coming with each collection as well in terms of floor price compared with listings and volume, time ranges, um, holder distribution, and then, you know, unique holders in a chart. So be on the lookout for that. That is going to be one of our bigger updates that we're going to be pushing out here shortly. Um I wish I could show you guys it, but unfortunately we can't. Shortly as in right. weeks? Um, you know, we're just waiting for the data to load in. So it could be by the end of this weekend or, you know, really, really early next week. Oh, that's very soon then. Very, very soon. Very, very soon. Very soon. Then you have another button here, all NFTs. Yep. So if you click the all NFTs button, that just brings you to kind of like the full collection page overview. Um, and you can basically see rankings of nft by volume over a 24-hour period um this is where you can basically find every single nft collection on the platform of course i think we're at like almost 1200 collections now so it's definitely a little bit tough if you want to you know scroll through all yeah. of them and find something but you know we're definitely working on some filters to help refine it down a little bit better for you know collections with utility pure based art collections and stuff like that and you're letting so, ca so categories, so categories, correct? Yeah. So, so yeah, like so, category filters, basically. Mm, yep. So yeah. are you censoring? Are you are you filtering this out, or are you letting anybody mint? So you know, um, in terms of let's say, for example, you already have a project that minted. All you have to do is log in with the issuer on the cafe, and you'll be able to see, you know, that collection is going to be in gray, and then it will say add collection to the cafe. You basically click that, and then there's going to be a bunch of filters that you have to fill in. You can choose a rarity standard. And if you don't fit within one of those standards, we provide documentation. So you can kind of see 
you know, the breakdown on how it's calculated, then you would reach out to us with the CSV file, say, hey, here's my custom rarity standard. Can you please upload it? As of right now, that's the only way to upload a custom rarity file. We're, we're working on a more streamlined process so we can kind of get out of it. Because at the end of the day, you're the project, you should be controlling the rarity. But you're not kind of saying, okay, your collection collection isn't good enough to be on here. No, okay. Where we're trying to be as decentralized as possible. If you want to make an NFT, no matter what the quality of art is or you know what you're doing, you're more than welcome to list on here. Now it's up to the community to reach out to us. Let's say, for example, you know, the collection has or the owners left the scene and there's you know verifiable proof that you know they're not working on the project anymore then we will you know, look into it, make sure it's a right yeah. move, and then remove it from the website. We just don't want to uh, shoot first and ask later. We want to make sure what we're doing is correct and all that good stuff. Now, just yeah. in terms of like nudity and stuff right now, um, we're working on some filters. Again, anybody's welcome to mint on the platform. Like here. Yeah. yeah no, I'm exactly. wrong with that, but I... <laughs> <laughs> so anybody's welcome to mint we, we just have to put some uh some blockers in place in case you know somebody under the age of 18 wants to come on the platform and or you, you could know, have a buy. not safe for work button somewhere exactly exactly so that's that's basically what we're going to be bringing in and you're not charging basically per se to create a collection on here Correct. It's just so the fees it, that are associated and a percentage yep, for, yeah. Exactly. So if you want to mint an NFT on the platform right now, we have a one of one minter that's completely free. You just have to upload each picture one by one. So if you click the create button on the top left, right next to the search bar, um, you'll be able to see that stuff. And we can then, go in there in a second. Yeah. Yep. So now if you wanted to, let's say, for example, release like a collection of like 2,000, 3,000 NFTs, of course, you're not going to hand upload 1,000 NFTs. That would take a God knows how long. Yeah, I did 200 manually did. and I'm not doing it <laughs> that again. Probably, yeah. Yeah, no, don't, that, I, hey, more power to you for that. But... <laughs> uh, buddy, the amount of moaning I got off him. Yeah. Oh right. God, that's that's tough. But yeah. yeah, if you wanted to release like you know a, a much larger collection, you didn't want to go you know the manual upload. Head into the Discord, reach out to us, send us. We'll we'll send you like kind of like a checklist, like you know project names, socials, some artwork. We'll take a look at it. Completely free to mint on our platform. We do have a long wait list right now, so it it won't be immediate. It'll take a little bit of time, but. Again, we don't charge anything for it. We just want people to be able to push their art out there. And by the nature of the XRPL, also, let's say you mint it somewhere else, your collection will appear here, correct? Correct. So yeah, all you have to do is, you know, log into the cafe with your issuer wallet. And then that gray button will pop up when you go to your tab, like as if it's an NFT within your wallet. You click add collection and then it's straightforward after that. We don't charge you anything. You know, the only fee on the platform is that 1.589% broker fee. Um, and, you know, that helps us keep our lights on, basically. Oh, nice yeah. number, by the way. <laughs> yeah, had to, had to. So who are you guys about? Who is the team? This is you, Sloppy, and we have Stove here, yeah. right? You, you two. Yeah. Tell us about everybody else. Yeah, so the biggest thing is... You know, we, we started as an NFT project, obviously. Um, you know, we started as uh, Park, which is how we kind of got into the XRPL. Um, and then we were initially going to list on a certain marketplace. Um, that marketplace is no longer around. So we were kind of forced to figure things out on our own. Um, and then actually, Mookie, who is a member of the team as well, um, had reached out to us, the Park team, um, who consists of Adam, uh, Chris, well, Sloppy, um, Timmy and myself. Um, and he said that basically, you know, we were going to work on creating, uh, the XRP cafe and, um, the members that were kind of already a part of that were, um, Jeb Z from X rooms, as well as vet, um, and as well as, uh, Tippy, who was, um, a new member that we had met as well. So we kind of all formed together and created this, uh, motley crew of devs, artists, um, you know, people in marketing as well. And, came together and, and created the cafe. Fantastic. So from an NFT project to your own marketplace, basically. Yep. Yep. Oh, and we were, 
Yeah, we were basically self-funded until the start of January. We were lucky enough to win, I think, the Wave 4 grant by Ripple. So that kind of helped us, you know, ease the pain a little bit in terms of funding, just because, again, we're, we were self-funded from, I would say, early October of 2022 to the beginning of January. So, you know, that grant money is definitely being used wisely, and it's going to help us kind of move to the next level and hopefully push people full-time here soon. Yep. Are you guys going to go do more grants from Ripple? I mean, you know, if there's um uh, if it if it makes sense at the end of the day, you know, um if it's like a grant that we fit in, you know, the, depending on the requirements, we'll definitely, you know, put an application in, but you know, we're we're having fun right now, so it's not really at the forefront. What I always love is the little button. Oh, I am a nice button. I love the button. I love, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love this. I think I did this in the last video. You as well. did, yeah. yeah. You discovered <laughs> it. It's just the CSS, right? That makes a dark mode here. Exactly. Yeah. Lovely. Yep. I just noticed the swap thing here is kind of new, isn't it? Tell us about that. So yeah, the cozy swap. Um, you know, if you've been around the XRPL for you know a while, you'll know that we started off with the IOU tokens. So we were basically helping projects get out of that phase and move into either XRP minting or, you know, minting out their collection with the Cozy Swap. So Cozy Swap is just mainly for those projects with the IOU tokens. Um, and yeah, the the IOU tokens, that, that was a fun experience on the ledger. It was like a mm -hmm. double-edged sword. It was good and bad at the same time. But I'm happy just in terms of like moving the space forward that there's only, I think, like two or three more projects using the Cozy Swap for IOUs. So you can do chain exchange your IU token for the NFTs of the of certain project. Correct. Yeah. So if you're a project with an IOU token, reach out to us. Um, and then you go in there, swap your token out. So the cool thing about Cozy Swap is it's true on demand minting. And then also, let's say for example, you know, um, you're like, okay, what's gonna happen with that token as like, you know, the person that's minting the NFT because you know, that IOU token gets exchanged. What we do is it's a two-step process. So you send us that IOU token and then we automatically send it to the black hole issuer. So that token will never ever be able to go back into that project's wallet, of course, because it's exchanged for that mint. So there's no risk of, let's say, for example, a project going back on the secondary market and selling it back on the deck. So, so it's basically you know, that, gets burned, right? Because it's it, the token to gets the, burned to the blacklisted yep. uh, issuer wallet, basically. Exactly. So the token gets burned, you get your NFT, um, and the rest is history after that. And can projects use their token also if it's not an IOU token? Let's say other projects have a token that is like a utility token for marketing and other purposes. They could use their token as well. Um, and I, I don't see a problem in that. If it gets but, burned, right? I think that's exactly essential. as long as the token gets burned. That's that's all we care about because the last thing that we want is people coming to us saying, "Oh, this project X Y Z, you know, starts all the tokens again." And it's like, hey, we, you know, we just want to make sure that you know we're safe on our side and also the community safe on their side. Doing a token uh, a payment basically in Cozy Swap and it gets burned is also good if you want to do, let's say, like a free mint of sorts, right? but you don't want to be free in a sense, you just press a button. It can be free for the community members who hold that token that you give out to them. So so similar to a so similar to a whitelist? Yeah, like a reward token for, for marketing purposes or on the Discord. And then those people could get their the token and then they could get NFTs for that for free, basically, in exchange for the token that they did so not have to pay for. Yeah, so we actually have something similar to that right now. So there's a collection called Pixel Skulls that are minting. So basically they released like a whitelist and then you would reach out to them, send them your wallet address, and then everybody on that whitelist would go there and, you know, mint their 10 NFTs for free. And they're currently still minting right now too. Okay, that would be one way. But without a whitelist, you could do it if you just say, we're using this token. Uh, and yeah. then... Because, for example, we have a token, the XRP Club has a token that we're giving out for, you know, uh, on Twitter and for retweeting and for good behavior, let's say. And we could do a <laughs> That's collection. Why I'm getting that yeah, people could get, 
get that token mm -hmm. um, that they didn't pay for, but then mint something with this. Exactly. And, yeah, you could definitely do that. You well, that's possible. That. That's excellent. Yep. It's like a second way. You wouldn't have a whitelist because it wouldn't matter, right? As long as they have the yep. token, they could as get an As long as they're NFT. holding that token. Yep. Yeah. Hold Which I think that's... Threshold. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yep. Okay. Do you do you think we can look at the create button here and uh, do something? Oh, of course. Of course. If you guys wanted to... It takes two seconds to create an NFT. So now let's say, for example, you wanted to create a collection. So that right box, the, the box on the right side, you just click new collection, type in your collection name, and then, you know, tax on, you can set it at any number. So then that's going to be your collection. So once the collection's made. Um, Explain real quick. Uh, let me interject. So yeah, tax on, what is tax on? So tax on is just like a unique identifier for the collection. So basically, let's say, for example, that wallet has multiple collections coming out. It can't use the same taxon. So it's going to be, you know, your first collection is going to be taxon one. Taxon two is going to be your next collection, just for example. So it's like a unique identifier for that collection. So the taxon number is not a universal number. It's tied to a specific address. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, that was something that I was wondering about. And then you would fill out the information here. You would add a thumbnail, a description, and then your taxon, which could be zero for the first one. Yep, exactly. And then after that, if you have a website, you put your website in. But it doesn't have to be, leave, right? Exactly. You can leave basically everything blank and you know you will still be able to create your collection. Of course, if you want people to find your Twitter handle, definitely put that in there. Mm, um, yeah. But if not, if you don't have one, perfectly fine to leave that blank. <clears throat> Um, and then you would go manually from here, right? You could yep. do one by one your NFTs. Let's say if it's a reasonable number, maybe less than 100. <laughs> like, 10. <laughs> <laughs> like 10 or 5. You could yeah. do NFTs of beautiful photos you have, of artwork that you created. No, exactly. Anything like that. And the cool thing about, you know, creating a collection on the cafe is when it comes to metadata, we actually have all the fields for you to input right there. So you can do, you know, head, all the traits and all that good stuff. So we try to make it as easy as possible so that right now you're just seeing the collection side. Once you create the collection, you'll be able to actually, you know, upload an NFT, for example. So this um, is the page that defines the collection by itself with a collection yep. image. And if you click on next here, you would get another page where you define yes. the traits and then the actual NFT image that you upload as yep. a JPEG or a PNG. Yep, correct? exactly, exactly. And then you'll have, you know, the description to fill out. You can create a custom name for it, um, rarity. And then we also have um, licensing. So, you know, CCO, CCBY, CCBY dash SA. So you can actually, um, Steve, what's the word that I'm looking for? So what um, would be, unfortunately, I can't look at this right now. What what be, would be like the, the normal licensing for something like this? So it really just depends on the project, what you want your community to do. Majority of people go with CC0 public domain. So basically you own the IP rights of the of the, of the the art after you purchase it. That's, that's right. Correct, Is Steve? that explained in that step somewhere or not? Um, yes, it is. We do have like a details page that kind of breaks down what oh, each licensing excellent. means. Yeah, yeah. We, we try to explain it as much as possible. So, and then you can also choose like rarity standards as well. So we offer, you know, the most standard rarity standards according to rarity tools. So standard, average, and hold on, let me see what the other one was. So standard, average, and statistical. Um, and then we have a breakdown for that as well that directs you right to, uh, you know, Rarity Tools Medium article. Now, let's say, for example, you're a collection and you have custom Rarity, which a lot of collections do have. Some collections put Rarity within the metadata. Then you would just reach out to us with that custom CSV file, hand it over to us. We'll upload it for you. As of right now, that's the only process for it. Um, later on in the future, we're actually going to be uploading a more streamlined process where you can just kind of dump that CSV file within the collection tab and upload your custom rarity filter by yourself. So obviously this way of creating the collection is for like a limited number, right? Exactly. Because so this manual. is more so, yeah. yeah, it's more so for, you know, smaller size collections, um, you know, one of one art. Now for, you know, again, the 10K collections, 5K collections are really realistically anything over 100. Honestly, that would take a couple hours to do. Um, 
you know, reach out to us in the Discord. We'll send you all the requirements needed. So as you see, um, actually, we don't have that. Just That just says list your collection. Um, you reach out to us. We'll send you these requirements. Send us the info. And then, you know, if you agree with um, in terms of being able to release it within the time frame that we have, then we're more than welcome to work with you. And it's absolutely free. Uh, we don't charge anything. We don't take a percentage of the mint or anything like that. Okay, free. Yet we have a button that says fees. Let's look at that. Yeah, for sure. There we go. So yeah. <laughs> What's up, Steve? My bad. No, go ahead. So yeah, the fees. Um, the only thing that we charge for on the platform is a trading fee of 1.589%. Again, we do have to keep the lights on on our side. Servers costs are pretty pretty expensive. Absolutely. Not lie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, for example, our we have, I'd like to think, one of the fastest marketplaces out there. It loads basically instantly, and it is expensive at the end of the day. So we're asking for a fairly minuscule amount of 1.589%. It is now, pretty if small, go, yeah. If you go to like other chains, OpenSea, Magic Eden, I think their minimum is like 2.5%, sometimes higher than that. So, you know, we we make enough to keep our servers running and everybody happy and and I mean, you know, traders on the platform, 1.589%, in my opinion, really isn't uh, too detrimental. That's excellent number. And so how does that work? Um, let's say I'm selling an NFT. I've created an NFT. I put the price 10 XRP. Who pays the fee? The, the fee is not paid upon creation, right? Correct. The fee correct. is paid so you're... once someone buys it. That is correct. So, you know, you yourself uploading that NFT completely free, you list it for sale, buyer goes there, um, they will see, okay, let's say you list it for 50 XRP, they would then pay, hold on, let me just do quick math. They would pay 50.7 XRP for the actual NFT, we would take the 0.7, you would take the 50. So that's a, just a tiny little bit added on for the buyer. <laughs> exactly. Which is totally justified with the beautiful yeah. work you guys are doing. Nick, well, you got a question? Money. No, it's just saying we've all got to make money. So who cares? Don't do it for free. Yeah. Um, you guys have anything you want to share? Something mm. that's ongoing, coming soon? You talked about the statistics page. Um, yep. You want so, to tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, statistics page coming here soon. Just a little bit more detail on that. Um, it's going to be in depth analytics on every collection on the cafe. Unfortunately, it's not out yet. But again, you're going to be able to filter by six hours a day, seven day, thirty days, all all time since you know that project came out, either on the inception of XLS twenty or you know absolute like yesterday, for example. You'll be able to favor collections, look at your collections that you're holding. Now, in terms of like the details, we're going to have a couple cool little charts that you can currently look at. Floor price listings volume with filters on it. Um, you know, all the standard metrics that you would see on like an open C, like a more established platform. Holder stats, floor listings, uh, unique holders. And then some like uh, some some plots where you can see okay most people are listing over here over here down here and all that good stuff. And you guys are constantly working on this, right? It's an ongoing project. You're always improving it and trying exactly. to make it more like let's say an open sea, right? Because they've been around for a long time, so they have a head start, big one. Exactly. So I think we've been in. I think we we fully released, I think it was November 20th of 2022. So a little bit late to the game in terms of XLS 20, because that was October 31st, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had some catching up to do. Um, Adam and Tippy, they have been neglecting their full-time jobs just to keep up. And, and you know, we, we can't think of <laughs> enough for that. You know, Adam's like, I work 60 hours a day. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you actually do. So um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah it's it's a lot of fun honestly you know um we're, we're a community-centric marketplace i'm not sure if you guys know we we've hosted multiple twitch events um yeah. you know charity events and all that good stuff so congratulations yeah, it's cool. on that one as well yeah no thank you for that we actually so at consensus we actually met up with saint jude um hanko from ripple reefs actually came up to our booth and was like hey saint jude is talking about you and we're like number one we had no clue that they were there and number two, the fact that they even knew who we were was like honestly insane. 
so me and Steve walk up to their booth and they're like, oh my God, thank you guys so much for what you're doing. And we're like, the fact that you know us is absolutely crazy. Yeah. You guys were at an event, right? Correct. Yep. We went to Consensus in Austin. Um, we had a we had a booth there and it was honestly overwhelming the amount of positive feedback we've got well we received from you know people going to the event we were the only xrpl project there um and then of course ripple was there right next to us that is but interesting you were the only ones next to ripple only ones there was no other xrpl projects you know we had an insane amount of people coming to our booth i mean steve do you want to kind of talk about that because there was one day where i Ooh. went with adam to a satellite event because he was speaking there and I know him and Timmy stayed at the booth and it got pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. So we were down in Austin, Texas, obviously, for the event. And I think we were there for three days with a booth. And the first day, um, like Chris said, him and Adam went to a, an event off of um, off of the you know convention grounds. And so Timmy and I had to man the booth alone. And I think we started around like 730 in the morning. Um, and we did not stop talking to people until I think like 630 or seven o'clock at night um, wow. to the point where we we're losing our voices. Uh, but like Chris said, I mean, it, it was one of the most positive um, events that we've attended. I know Adam has attended a couple. He's uh, been to Apex. Um, Timmy and I and Adam as well went to ETH Denver. Um, but this was a, a little bit different of, a, of an event. The uh, The one at ETH Denver, the second that we mentioned to anyone that we we're involved with xrp they're like xrp like i've been shorting xrp since 2017 so um you know not the best um reaction over at ETH denver however um consensus was a was really positive you know a lot of people that we had spoken about um you know both knew about xrp and um were actually interested in it so it was a, a super great event obviously to promote you know our marketplace um but also to kind of onboard new people from different chains or um, new people who have never really heard about or created NFTs or owned NFTs. Um, so, you know, we, we released some metrics as well. Um, we're probably going to bring them public a little bit uh, later on, but, you know, super, super positive for onboarding people to the XRPL. A lot of yeah, people kind of, yeah, go ahead. And kind of how we did the onboarding was, uh, Jebzy and Timmy actually created something called cons consensus checks, and it was a free collection of I think twelve hundred NFTs. So we had I wanted these cool to mention that. What? What? How do I look that up real quick? So, <clears throat> if you go, to, if you just type in, I'm pretty sure check on the top, like in the search bar, you'll see consensus check 2023, and that was like kind of like a proof of attendance. So Is, basically, what's the name of the collection? Oh, consensus check. come up oh there you go yep the little cloud so yeah. we had if you want to give me like two seconds i can actually go grab one of the postcards. yeah no worries no worries yeah, no worries so yeah you know we had a we had a nice little postcard hopefully you guys can see it and it's not blurry um blurred, but ain't mine. Oh. A bit blurry so basically it says you know why come over to the xrpl fast three second speed secure everything is layer one no smart contracts needed layer one royalties you know royalties are basically enforced and the marketplace can't manipulate whether a creator gets those or not uh decentralized you know with the unls where ripple only owns one of them and um unl agreements over two weeks cheap of course with the less than a penny transaction fee so we basically had like that rundown on why we're building on the XRPL. And then on the back, we had that QR code where you can either claim with your ZUM wallet, but since majority of the people weren't there for XRP or had no clue that XRP was even a thing with NFTs, exactly. we had an email. That, that's we had something an e we've found because I've been on different ETH projects and that and other things, and they didn't even know that XRP are doing NFTs. I was amazed. Yeah. So what we did was, you know, prior to that, we're like, okay, so we have to have something because some wallet takes a little bit to set up and nobody wants to set up a wallet directly at a convention and potentially lose their seed phrase that they just wrote down. <laughs> so we had a claim by email button. So you put your email in, we send you basically instructions on how to download some, what you need to get it started, 10 for the reserves, two for the trust lines, two for every 32 NFTs you hold. And then you were able to claim that NFT by email, gives you time to set up your 
um, your wallet and all that good stuff, and then kind of uh, hold that check off to the side, basically. Good. Yeah, but, you know, as of right now, um, you know, they were just proof of attendance NFTs. I think Jebsy came up with 12 different colors, uh, you know, Japanese text, um, some without it, some with the check, some without the check. Um, it's just a little fun collection that, um, you know, hopefully we drove more people into the XRPL with. And based on the metrics that we had, um, we definitely brought over a couple people. I think there was like 350 wallets created somewhere around there that, you know, weren't a thing before. So it was it was definitely successful. Promoting the XRPL everywhere you go. Exactly. Yeah, like Nick said, um, we, we, we meet projects and they have no idea that there's nfts on the xrpl they they have not yeah a clue. yeah it was it was funny because at the booth so we had probably the least amount of text on our like backdrop it was just the cup that said very cozy next to it so people would be walking by just like staring at the cup and then the xrp cafe and they're like what are you guys and we're like oh we're an nft marketplace on the ledger and they're like we had absolutely no clue that you guys had NFTs and then we would kind of go into the spiel about why we're here. We had a nice like little pull up where, you know, people would be able to look at like a little banner. Um, and yeah, they were, they were like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, a lot of people very interested, which was amazing. Yeah, there was, um, there was a multiple groups of people. There were people um, that, you know, didn't know about NFTs at all. Um, there was ones, and this was the, probably the mo most interesting group, was the people that um, were XRP holders, but they had no idea that there were NFTs on the ledger. Um, ah. and that, was, that was a really awesome group to target because they already owned XRP, so they could literally go on um, Zum and basically create a wallet, fund it, and get the NFT right there on the spot. Um, whereas, you know, new people that we were trying to onboard um, you know, being in the U.S., it's pretty tough to actually get XRP. There's a little process to, to purchasing it. Um, it was a little bit harder to onboard, you know, people like that. So, Nick, you got a question? Not, no questions. Well, I, I would... just love the marketplace. I think yeah, it's, really it's wonderful. Easy Thank you so use. much. Thank you so much. The so only one like... I use, put it that way. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've used many of them and we're just, you know, loving yours. Um, hey, thank you so much for that. We got a lot of great things coming again, only six months in. So we were a little bit late to the scene, but hey, everybody yeah, seen soon always, enough. always a pleasure to be on your guys' show. We know uh, we kind of do the same type of thing, whether it be on Twitch or, or doing podcasts and stuff like that. So I think this is our, this is our what, second time being on here, Sabi? Second time, yeah. I think Third. second time, yeah. Well, well, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> we have done part, then we do an XRP cafe when you launch that. So this is third time. Awesome. Hey. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. So there's I'm used, used to a Twitch joint, so <laughs> I know that. Yeah. We've <laughs> also I've not you had a Twitter space, right, recently. Yeah, so we host a uh, weekly update Twitter spaces, um, literally every Tuesday at six PM Eastern. You know, and the, the main purpose of that space is just to show people that hey, we're continuously building. And we're releasing updates. And then we also, you know, give people the opportunity to come up, ask questions, tell us what they hate about the platform, which I think is the biggest thing. Granted, you know, we don't get that much hate. Even though that's a strong but... word, right? Hate. Exactly. Yeah, hate is a strong word, but we're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, hey, criticism. if you guys we're like, hey, if you guys don't like anything, you know, again, we're when when we say that we're a community centric marketplace, we actually mean it like our ideas channel in the discord people will dump stuff in there you'll always see us interacting with an idea that comes out and then we'll talk about it internally and then if enough people are talking about it we'll actually push that update forward we rely on the community a lot so you know the least we can do is open up a twitter space for two three hours and interact with everybody you know so what you can really say about you guys is the the whole cozy theme isn't just marketing you guys are no. as laid back and open to the community as it you know makes it appear it's it's truthful and uh, that's a wonderful thing and it's a rare thing so i props exactly on that. you know we wanted to come into this space and as cliche as it sounds take the suits off and kind of just give you like you know the sloppy you would get in real life is the sloppy you'll get on twitter and 
all that good stuff. So, Which is good. Yeah, it's excellent. Exactly. So ending this for today, have you guys anything else to add? Oh, definitely tune in to, uh, if you're not already in our Discord, definitely join in the Discord. There's always some um, you know, awesome chats going on. And if you're within the XRPL and you're releasing a collection um, or you basically need any of our help, join the Discord. Um, you know, create a ticket if you'd need to join our Twitter space. If you're trying to promote your project, um, you know, we always have people that come up and, and let us know what's going on with their project. I know, um, you know, someone uh, named OC Lost Art is actually hosting an event over in uh, August, I believe. And he's always in there kind of telling people um, what's going on with his event. So anything that anyone needs from the cafe, feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to help. You guys are very approachable. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we try. We try. <laughs> Easy going. Guys. Yeah. That's what... So, Nick, I think that concludes it that for this video. That concludes it, yeah. Thanks ever so we much. We want to guys. thank you for being on, and we'll have you back when there's news. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys for having us again. Thanks ever so much, Thanks, guys. guys. To the moon. <laughs>